Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve men istenne bi sünneti ve aktefe eferahu ila yevmiddin thumme emme ben. El asıl fil kevn ve fi alakatil insan bi rabbi hiyel rahme. The relationship of the human being and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is based on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very merciful with us. This universe is established by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything you have in this universe is because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he said his mercy wa rahmati sabakat ghadabi. My rahma, my mercy is far more greater than my anger and it is faster. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qal inna Allah bin nas la ra'ufur rahim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with people is very compassionate and very merciful. This is very evident in Surah Al-Fatiha. It starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful. Then you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Then the mercy is repeated in the second ayah twice to show you what mercy is all about. Having said that, I want to talk today about something that we all go through, which is, you know what it is? Trials, problems problems. You see how people look at it? They always say problems. Trials, problems. Is really trials problems? No, because trials is ni'am wa When a blue kum bisharri wal khayri fit. We test you in good and bad. But all the time when we talk about testing, we only talk about bad. Sah? Every time you have a problem, you say, Allah is testing me. I have been tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to, for instance, to have a twin, or to graduate, or to have a righteous wife, or a righteous husband, or a righteous child, how many people talk about that and say, Allah has tested me. It is a test. It's a huge test. It's actually a bigger test. You know why? Because you don't even know it's a test. So you don't deal with it right. If you don't know what the test is all about, how can you prepare yourself for it? And how can you answer the questions? So when was the last time that you marry an obedient wife? very good wife. When was the last time you sit to yourself and you say, what a test. Am I really taking care of her the way she deserves? Am I really showing her gratitude? Am I really, am I really? When was the last time? We don't. But when she goes wrong, or when the husband goes wrong, then we go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing me with her or with him, and we start complaining. Same thing with children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with a child. How many of us really say Alhamdulillah and they mean it? How do you mean it? By raising the child Islamically. How many of us say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing me with that child? Am I going to fulfill Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara? Am I really going to do that? Do we think about that? What do we do? We throw a party and most of the things that we do in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, maybe not even pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we call that gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, having said that, I want to talk about the one that we don't like. Even though the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمًا ابتلاهم. If 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves people, He loves you, He will test you. Now this test is in good and bad, but just like I said, most people don't pay attention to the good test. I want to talk about the bad test or what we think it's a bad test. You see, that's the problem, is we think it's a bad test, even though when we look at the Qur'an, we read what? وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Who doesn't know this ayah? You may hate something, it's really good for you. Okay, maybe you know it. Did you really apply it? When you have a headache, when you fail, when something happens to you, when you have an accident or have something bad in your life, did you ever stop and say, Allah knows and I don't know. Maybe the goodness will come out of that. Alhamdulillah ala kul hal. You say that, you succeeded. You're getting rewarded for the test, you passed, so you get the rewards, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you patience on that test. You see, the more good you are, the bigger the test. Why? Because you can handle it. If this guy carries 200 pounds, and I give him 190 pounds, no problem. He can carry, he can take it. But if he can carry 200 and I give him 250, it's over. He cannot handle it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not test you with something bigger than what you handle. So the more faith you have, the bigger the test because you can handle it. Look at the test of the Prophet sallallahu and the prophets. Yeah, you think about it. All of his children died, the boys. Then his uncle then his wife, then he was rejected by his people, then he was kicked out of the country, then he was pelted with stones, then he was suffering so much and worried so much all of his life, and he is the best person on earth in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you are tested and you accept the test, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the patience on it. So he helps you be patient. Where are you going, brother? <laughs> you going to thank your wife? I know, I'm, I'm just joking with you. I know, brother, I know. But now you're going to encourage everyone to go. Tell them to sit, please. So I, I collected for you the benefits of the test, 14 points. The benefits of the test, that is from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet I will share with you inshallah. Number one, you're tested to see so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala check our level of faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you might look at yourself and say, oh, alhamdulillah, I'm knowledgeable, I know, and I did, and I studied, and all of that, no problem, just like some people. When someone warns you about something, let's say mixing, how many people warn about mixing? Don't mix. It's haram. It leads to this and this and this. Then someone, tough person would come and say, I trust myself. I trust my son. I trust my daughter. I trust, uh, alhamdulillah, we know halal and haram. I lower my gaze. I know, I know how to do it. Habibi, if the Prophet ﷺ tells you stay away from something, stay away from something. When the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the trial of Dajjal, that false person who comes to claim he is God, he taught us everything about him, how he looks, and what to do if we see him, and how to avoid him. But guess what? He told us, if he is in one street, go the opposite. Do not expose yourself to his test. Don't rely on your goodness. Because you have no idea when you fall, what will happen. Sahaba radiallahu anhum, for instance, they asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and they wanted to fight. They wanted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prescribe on them jihad. They want to fight the pagans. They want to fight the enemy. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised them what? He said, do not wish 
to meet the enemies. Why? Because you have no idea. Now you look good and you feel comfortable and you're chewing gum and enjoying yourself and tomorrow you look and you see someone with a sword and someone on and you say, whoa, whoa, whoa. A hundred people against one. Some of the fights were even more than that. He said, but if you are tested and happen to face the enemy, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to affirm your heart and be patient. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He checks our faith, level of faith. A lot of times we claim things and we are not. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to prove it to us. You say, Alhamdulillah, I'm patient. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes some of those ni'am that He had given you and He will see what you say. That's a proof, that's a test for you. Are you going to say Alhamdulillah and be patient or are you going to start complaining and say I, I and I was and what did I do and what and why me and all of that stuff? That's number one. So it is faith check. Second one, to know your closeness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To see how close you are, you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have a problem, what do you do? If I'm close to brother Jashim, I'm not, but let's just assume. If I'm close to him, really close, and I have a problem, you don't think I would go to him and ask him for help? You are looking at me because none of you are good to one another. Of course you go, brother. Why are you looking at me like it's something strange? Now I know how to pick my friends. Kyle, you, you guys looking at me as if, really? You go to your friend? No, probably I go to Bank of America and get a loan so I can solve my problem. Of course you go. What friends are for? So if you claim you're close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are tested with a problem, He is number one to go to. He is the first to ask Him to help you. He is the first to seek patience from. And a lot of people go everywhere except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they leave him the last thing. It's like you have problems, sickness, disease and everything and, and someone will come and tell you, brother, uh, do you try Rukia? Uh, not really. Uh, you checked with every doctor, you checked with every person, with every specialist. But Surat Al-Fatiha is a cure for everything. How many of us read it? Surat Al-Fatiha. You didn't read it? And then when you are cornered, meaning you've done everything and nothing works, then you say, okay, I'll try it. Whoa. With the doctor, you're sure. He's got the problem. You go there and you feel good. I'm going to the best the specialist. He's been in the specialty so long, recommended. Did a thousand, like one person I asked him, he said, oh yeah, I know. He did a thousand operations. How many operations Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did? How many? All the operations are done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing works without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doctors can do anything without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When did you check with him? Why don't you ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal you? And do the ruqya because it is directed from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is a check for your closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A third one, it humbles you. This is a deserving one to talk about. So many people are arrogant without knowing. And that is the worst is you do things you think you deserving people's respect. You think you are above them. You don't say it this way, but you do things that proves that. Yeah, and if for instance, this young man says, Sheikh Hassan, uh, here is my number. Can you please, after uh, you finish the lecture, uh, call me, I need to talk to you. Okay, I will tell him, no brother, if you need me, you call me. Whoa. Now if he's a student, I want to teach him respect and all of that, it's okay. 
But if he is just someone asking me for that, I will call him. Even though I feel like he should call me, I will step on my I did one student to university, and the doctor that he was taking the subject with Fiqh, he told me, not the doctor, I mean, the person he told me, he got upset at me. And I said, why? He said, because I, I told him, brother. He said, you should address me, I'm doctor such and such and all of that. Now, yes. Uh, me personally, I will address the person with his best title. He worked for that and he deserved to call him doctor or whatever. From my perspective, not from his perspective. I will do, this is like when you do something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't expect you to say thank you, but you should say thank you. And I don't expect you to call me doctor, to, 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 to give me the title uh, that I deserve. But you should do it. So this is arrogance, hitting arrogance that we don't really pay too much attention to. If you feel it, if the person yani, is not doing the right thing, step on your ego, do it, even though it's not the right thing, but just to tame yourself and give yourself what it really is. You are what? Just uh, one of the righteous predecessors told the Muhallab ibn Abi Sufra, he was arrogantly walking. And then when he looked at that sheikh and he said something and he told him, basically he was arrogantly saying, he said, you don't know who I am? He said, yes, I know. You are, came from a despicable sperm. Then you're walking, carrying your stool with you, and then you die and you become a stinky corpse. Luckily, al muhallab was fair. He told him, you really know me. <laughs> That's funny, brother. You don't think it's funny? For someone, a leader, you tell a leader that, and you think he would tell you that? What jail you would be going to? <laughs> yeah. So humble yourself. Number four, to make us value the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the bounty because sometimes that's the only way you know you have a bounty. Brother, just because you saw him get up, you left? That's okay, brother. It's too late. I know that. Especially he's going to himself. This is number four. He said he's going to mention 14, right? <laughs> Don't worry, brother. I summarize him quick. I say, oh, I guess it takes that, subhanAllah. All it takes is one to encourage everyone for evil. <laughs> so if you have a ni'mah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes it from you, now you realize you have a ni'mah. So it's really a reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ni'mah that you did not pay attention to. Number five, to, pur to purify you from your sins. Every calamity. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a thorn sticks you, you are erasing sins. If you're worried, you have a problem. And you're sitting thinking about it. It is erasing sins. So everything you go through is erasing sins. And that is definitely a lot better than getting punished in the hellfire. Number six, to make you wait for relief. And that is a big worship by itself. When you sit waiting for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve you patiently, that is a huge Reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number seven, to scare you so that you come back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called, وَمَا نُرْسِلُ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا تَخْوِيفًا Allah subhanahu wa the, 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 the clips that people come from a different state to take pictures of, it's meant to scare you, not to take a movie and take pictures for it. 
And, the, and, and that is what, what, what the Prophet ﷺ told us. When you have the eclipse, go take a video, right? And make someone there taking good pictures of it. What do you do? You stand in prayer until it's over. Could be the day of judgment. It could be a disaster. It could be a calamity. It could be something that the moon would, not, the sun would not come back again. Anything could happen. So this is also something to scare us with. Number eight, to drive you to be grateful. Anytime you are in a calamity, and the calamity is losing something, you have a job and you lost it, and it was a good job. Now it reminds you that whenever you have something good, be grateful to it. But you know what? Grateful to us, Alhamdulillah. No, Habibi. Gratefulness is not Alhamdulillah. Gratefulness is to know it is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, to say Alhamdulillah and to act upon it for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If you have a good job, you have money, you say Alhamdulillah, you do your job right, you make da'wah where you are, you make sure that you're doing your prayers, you make sure that you're spending some of that money that you're getting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you make sure your earning is halal, that is how you show gratefulness to the da'wah, to uh, uh, the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number nine, to make you feel for others. If you don't suffer and you don't go through calamities, how would you know how people are suffering? If you don't get hungry, if you don't lose a job, if you don't fail in life, how are you going to feel with people who fail or people who lost someone? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the specialty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him, almost every calamity that people face, he went through it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Any problem you have, you have a sunnah, how to deal with it, because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, went through it. And that is why he is our example in everything good or يعني, the test when the test is good and when the test is negative, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, dealt with all of that. Number 10, to detach you from this world and connect you to the hereafter. What do you do when you are tested in bad? This world is no longer good for you. You will hate yourself. Sometimes you may wish to die. You, this world is not good. Whatever good you have, just because you have one problem, it ruins everything else that you have. So it takes you out from this world and connects you with the hereafter because it makes you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the benefit of it. Number 11. To make you live for the heavenly above, not for what is below. This is similar to the one before. So when you have a problem, you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is taking you to heaven. Number 12, to increase you with patience and endurance. The more problems you have, the more patience you have. Why do prophets go through a lot of tests? And why did the Sahaba suffer too much and the Prophet ﷺ was giving them patience and telling them to be patient, patient, patient? What happened? After that, they were ready to give their life, their family, their, mo their money, their country, everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because now they are men. They went through hardship and they know how to deal with it and that gave them uh, a lot of strength, and that is uh, something just like when you go to the gym, the first day and two, you get sore and you complain and you may quit, and, but after that you start getting used to it and you start building and you start loving it. And that's why the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, when, when there is a, a battle with the, with the pagans, they miss it, they see it as a, a, a misfortune that they did not get to participate in it, even though their life depends on it but because of the strength that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them and the love for him. Number 14, or number 13, to reward you, and the reward is bigger and better than the suffering. Always the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bigger than the suffering. Always. And especially when you know it is erasing sins and giving you hasanat. The final one, to raise you higher in Jannah.
assuming that like this brother here, he's so good, mashallah, he doesn't have any sins. So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing him? Because his miserable work is so little. He does qiyam, but he does two rak'ah, three rak'ah. He does fasting, but little here and little there. It's not going to get him in firdaus. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests him with hardship. And because he has faith, he has the patience granted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gets reward for that. He goes to the highest level in Jannah because of the trials. So, in conclusion, when you are tested, look what happens. Pay attention because this is, I'm going to just give you the, the, the fruit of all of this. You will be ready and prepared for a bigger test when it comes. Agree? Time. And then you will have more endurance and suffering. Correct? Say yes or no, brother. Yes. Thank you. And with endurance, your faith and body become stronger. Agree? Yes. And when you are stronger, you become useful, more useful. And when you are more useful, you become more used to benefit others. And when you are benefiting others, you will be fulfilling the purpose of your existence. It is two relations. One with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you succeeded in that, dealing with your calamity, connecting with Him. And the other one with people, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ إِسْتَطَاعَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَنْفَعَ أَخَاهُ فَلْيَفْعَلُ Anyone who is able to help his Muslim brother, let him do it. And that's what patience and that's what trials connect you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with people. And so trials are really a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love you and give you patience and admit you to the highest level in Jannah. Jazakumullahu khairan for staying and for listening. And we pray that, inshallah, we all benefit from that and live by it. My last word, say alhamdulillah and remember the good things that you have, they are tests. Everything is tests. Thank you. Bad and good and bad. Good conclusion, right? Isn't that what I said? <laughs> Can we leave now? Jazakallah <laughs> 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 khair.